Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the most common cheating I have seen, and it re it involves sitting with friends or involving friends in some way, maybe a play group at a sealed or a draft event. Uh, it happens at pre-release all the time. I saw it happen at the pre-release Amy and I went to, and I've never not seen it happen at a pre-release. What will occur is a group of friends will go to a pre-release together and they will open their sealed pools and they will give all the good green cards to that one player, all the good red cards to another player, all the good this card to another player. And so you are left with decks that are combined from six different card pools um, and each one is a good archetype, which is much better. So this actually happened apparently at the GP level which it shouldn't happen because at the GP level you have enough judges. But at pre-releases I go to, even the one that had 100 people, there's no judge. It's just a tournament organizer and that's it. So there's rampant cheating. Uh, I don't want to accuse anyone, but I'm going to because I feel like it has to be said. At pre-release events, it's so bad. I've, I know this particular group of six people who come to the event all the time, they finish in the top four every time, and then they split the prize pool. Some of my pre-releases have been very good. I've been blessed with really good sealed de decks, but some of them have been very bad. Now, the probability of you winning pre-release 10 times, let's say 10 times in a row, I've been to Houston since five years ago, and the same exact people who win pre-release every single time with OP decks. There is never gonna, be a deck as strong as the one my opponent played during M15. I played him during the uh, regular rounds and then I played him in the top eight. So I got to see a lot of his deck. And his deck had seven uncolor rares and mythics, including Garuk. So he had a nightmare, multiple green fatties, and then he had the Garuk, which was the black green Garuk. And how does he get to seven when there's only six packs, right? Well, he had a foil uh, nightmare and then a regular nightmare. And nightmare for that particular deck was actually very good because it was just a giant flyer and he splashed for green for group. So it was a mono black deck with two nightmares, some green fatties, and then the group. Now, normally I would say, ah, maybe that's possible. But at one of the pre-releases I went to at Groovy Geckos, the guy pretty much had the introduction deck that you buy at the release event. And a lot of people will do that. They will buy the introduction deck or the, right now I guess it's called Planeswalker deck. And then they will add the cards, some of the cards to the, uh, that are not, you know, special. Or hopefully they are smart enough not to realize that, to realize, or I guess not realize that the cards are not identical. And there's some cards in the Planeswalker deck that are not in the regular set. Overall, this is a very, very big problem. Uh, there's many ways it happens. I think what it normally happens is a group of friends go together, they come up with this plan beforehand, and then they take a smoke break. The odd thing is not all of them smoke. And you might be like, oh, maybe they're just hanging out with each other, right? Then why do they need to hang out like way back, like in the dark alley somewhere? Like, I'm not making this stuff up. It's a... Um, if you play the locals I do, I know a few of you may have, you know what I'm talking about, right? When the group, or even worse, I remember this group of two, um, so two people, and they went to the bathroom together, and they were like two dudes. I was like, what are you doing in the bathroom together? Like, like seriously, like, what's going on? Uh, and I don't know, like, once you get later into night, the decks that you face are just much stronger like much, much stronger. And it's like, whoa, what happened to this deck? Like it, it's, it seems like a standard deck almost. And once you get the top eight, all the decks are pretty much pseudo standard or budget standard decks. So sealed, pre-release, I mean, I just have fun in it. I don't expect to win anymore. I don't expect to do super well. If I break two, two, um, or if uh, Amy goes one free, or like if she wins a game, we'll just go home early and it's not and not deal with the stress of cheating and all that stuff that I used to deal with when you got the top eight. When you get to the top eight, you know, it's just insane. I was the one seed for one of the pre-releases. I want to say Journey to Knicks. I was taken down by the eight seed, 
but I played the eight seed before, and his deck just was like got like a ton stronger. I played him in the first round, and I beat him pretty handily. I was playing aggro. I always play aggro because it's a it's a very easy deck to play, and if you have the right cards, you can win. And he beat me. He crushed me. I was like, okay, I didn't see any of these cards the first time I beat you, but cool. <laughs> Be careful, especially during drafts and uh, sealed events, uh, pre-release events. If something seems like too unreal to be real, it probably is. Just not because it's not because not w the pro A lot of people will argue and they will say, "Oh, well, somebody can pull a multiple masterpiece set and they can pull all these amazing stuff." They can, but not everyone can. So if your locals is six dudes and they went for a smoke break or they went to the bathroom, the one single person bathroom together, you have, to, and then they all in the top eight, something probably is not right if all of their decks are incredibly strong. Anyway, that's my personal opinion. I don't know if you guys have the same experience. Uh, it really does take away from the atmosphere. I'm now. I'm really looking for a place that's casual, a place that like the prize support probably isn't that great, but no one cares because it's just about having fun. And I want to go back to that type of place where cheating. There's no point to cheating because there's the prize support is not there. Why? What are you going to win? At the other place with 100 people, the prize support is very very good. It's four people, four packs a person. So it's 400 packs and it's extremely top heavy. So then you have individuals who uh, think that it's worth cheating. But if the prize support is like win no game, you get a pack and the most you get four packs, I feel like that place will be much less suspect to cheating because there's no payoff, right? Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye guys.